Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. So I have the TMT tourniquet here, the Tactical Mechanical Tourniquet. It's made by Combat Medical. This one recently got recommended by the TCCC committee, which is a great thing. Uh, lots of data, research behind that. So we're going to take a look at it. So before we open up and play with it, I just want to kind of show you the packaging here. They have it staged the way they recommend you stage it. We'll take a look at that in just a minute. Uh, but it does come sealed from the factory, so I would personally recommend you go and open it up because trying to get this open when you have bloody hands and fingers could be a problem. So I would recommend you open it up there. Uh, you have some directions here in case under a moment of panic you forget. So you could always leave this with your tourniquet. But I do recommend you go ahead and take it out of the packaging. We can open it up here. We'll show you some of the specs. I'll talk about some of the specs in a second. But it's got, here is your tail. So we're going to pull this through the buckle, get it super tight, and turn the windlass until bleeding stops. And it locks into the retaining clip there. All right, so if we extend this all the way out, this is 38 inches in circumference. If we take it all the way down now, we're at five inches and three quarters. So just a little under six inches in circumference. So it'll go down to this far. If the armor leg is smaller than this, a good solid pressure bandage is more than likely all the patient needs. The TMT tourniquet is two and a half inches in width here. It gives us a good wide compression band. The TMT tourniquet is also made in the USA, so we know that the quality control is behind it and we're getting a good product. All right, so we'll take a, just a little bit closer look here at it and then we'll go and show you how to put it on, how to apply it. So you're pulling this direction. You have a time stamp here and you have a buckle here. Now the buckle, you could absolutely just loop it through if you want to, or if you want to disconnect it, you can disconnect it. Either way that your training has been teaching you, um, go with it. So if you want to loop it through the extremity or you want to disconnect it and then reattach it, either way. Turn the windlass. You can turn the windlass either way and it secures into the locking clip. So the tourniquet itself, this is composite plastic. This is plastic here and the buckle is plastic as well. But it does flow very nicely through the buckle to help you, especially with those one-handed applications. On the back side here, the plate does have some curvature naturally from the factory and then you have this textured here is going to help you get a good grip on the extremity as you apply the tourniquet. The tip here where the timestamp is does have a little hard piece. I don't honestly know what's inside there but it's like a little round hard object so I think it's going to help you grab it, grab something, grab a hold of it especially if you're sticking up under this guy's leg right here as you feed up under his leg gives you something to grab a hold of to pull it back through if you disconnected it. All right, so if we're gonna self-apply it, then we wanna pull this band towards you. So it's got an arrow pointing towards you. So slip it on, pull it tight, feed the Velcro around, turn the windlass until the bleeding stops. Once you get done, here, it secures and locks in place. If you're applying the tourniquet to someone else, I generally do try to hold pressure here to slow down the bleeding, but you can loop it through, or absolutely you could disconnect this and apply it. So we'll just loop it through this stump right here. Pull this strap towards you. Get it nice and tight, and turn it until it locks into place. You'll hear it click to know this is locked into place. Let's say our patient got hit by a car or he's fallen off a building, something like that. We, we believe he's got an unstable pelvis. His heart rate's really high, so there's a good possibility he may be bleeding out inside his pelvis area. Because the TMT is two inches wide, we can make it a pelvic binder and kind of compress the pelvis down to help control bleeding with a tourniquet. It's 38 inches wide, so that helps us out, making that process easier. But if you needed to apply two of these together, you could absolutely could do that. All right, since my guy does not have a 38 inch waistline, I'll show you how to use this as a pelvic binder. So we got the pelvis, the hips here. I slid this up under the small of the back. Get this in place. Now we can pull this tight. And just rotate this just a little bit to kind of pull some pressure 
onto the pelvis. So I already showed you that the TMT can be used as a pelvic binder. The other thing I'm excited about, which will be released very soon as I film this video, is an addition that will attach to the back part of this plate that looks like a plastic uh, ball. We can attach that, flip it over, and we can use this as a junctional tourniquet. Say someone's bleeding up in the leg, the hip area, too high up for a tourniquet. You can put this on with a ball attached to it. We put that into the groin area and tighten it down and we now have a junctional tourniquet. Normally those junctional tourniquets are super expensive, but for this, we can have a junctional tourniquet pretty reasonably priced. Hopefully we'll see that soon. So I hope this video helps. You never know when you'll be the first responder. Remember the right gear and the right training.